Hi everybody, so today we're going to go over on how to make bone broth. So let's go over the ingredients. So the first ones we're going to go over are the non-meat ones. We have our veggies, which is carrots, onions, celery, leeks, uh, shiitake mushrooms, garlic, ginger, um, and of course, if you have the opportunity, you could put goji berries in it. Uh, we also have vinegar. Here I have the apple cider. And also for flavor, we could put some fish sauce in there. So the meats today that we decided to go over using are chicken, beef, and veal. Okay, so first thing you do is just dump the vegetables in the pot, washed of course, and just arrange them on the bottom. Uh, make sure they're pretty much covering the bottom when the meat goes in. You don't want the meat necessarily touching the bottom, and this will make it hard to clean. Uh, so after these root vegetables, I decided to put in the shiitake mushrooms, uh, the aromatics, um, which includes the ginger and the garlic. And of course, optional goji bears. Okay, so after that, I'll just put the bones in there. And of course, we're going to start filling it with water. Uh, in this particular shot, I didn't have enough water. So what I'll do later on is just fill more water in there. Okay, so then I would like to put the vinegar in there. Uh, this is supposed to help the minerals come out of the bones. I put in the fish sauce. This is supposed to give it a nice uh, meaty, earthy flavor to the broth. Wait 30 minutes to let the vinegar do its thing. Okay, so read the directions on how to use your pressure cooker. Over here, uh, you have the setting of two, which is for making broth and other items like that. The setting one is really for you know, soft poaching of meats, but you just need to lock it. Uh, you try to bring your pressure cooker up to pressure. And you just gotta wait for the indicator to pop up. Once that indicator pops up, as you see here, um, you can lower the flame back down. So you just turn it down, and as long as the pot is able to maintain pressure, you could just use a very small flame. So after two hours, I just shut off the flame and wait for the pot to depressure. So once that happens, you can unlock it and remove the cover. And this is what it looks like inside. Uh, everything is going to probably be very soft and mushy because you've been cooking it for so long. But not to worry, you really just want the broth portion. Okay, so next what I do is I take a vessel, uh, I take a fine uh, mesh wire, and I just start straining the broth. Uh, normally I do this over the sink, but for the camera purposes, I just do it on the counter where you can see it more clearly. And what you're trying to do is just trying not to have any vegetation or uh, bones or meat go into your broth. Okay, as you see here, uh, it is opaque. Uh, the color is very big, dependent on the type of meat and bones you use. Uh, red meat will tend to have a browner uh, color. Uh, if you have just chicken, it's usually more of a yellowish color. So after that, you just let the broth cool down and then you can place it in the refrigerator. Over here, I have two batches. Uh, the first batch here is from uh, a bone broth which I made without a gelatin-y like uh, joint to meat and this one's with the gelatin. I see over here it's kind of like a jello consistency. Um, the top layer is fat. And so what do you want to do is you, you generally don't want the fat. So you just could take a spoon and you scrape off the fat. Um, you don't have to be perfect because sometimes I do want a little bit of fat and that's just to help with the flavor. But once it's cooled, the fat is very easy to remove. You just basically just scrape it off and dump it out. Normally I just throw it out directly into the garbage can, but for filming, I'll put it in a bowl. Uh, you can also use the fat for other purposes. You could use it to cook, 
And it's supposed to make food taste very good. Finally, I just take it. Uh, you can scoop it out from a larger container, make uh, cool them in smaller containers. It's up to you. Uh, usually two minutes is more than enough to reheat the broth. Um, so at this point, uh, you just gotta be very careful. The, the vessel that you're using it in is probably going to be very hot. So just try not to burn yourself. And as you can see here, um, once heated, the broth loses its jello-like consistency and it's now a liquid. Uh, during the reheat, you could put the goji berries, you could put the ginger, uh, you can put whatever stuff you want in there. Uh, you can see this one is the, the non-gelatin-y like batch. Uh, I placed ginger uh, and goji berries and I left some mushrooms in there. Uh, this is also the time you want to add salt. Otherwise, the, the broth doesn't really have much of a flavor. Uh, salt really brings out the flavor of everything. And just. Just be careful not to put too much salt. Uh, a little small pinch will do for about this size. And this is roughly about maybe 16 ounces. Okay, I'm just showing you the different uh, flavors I put in there. I could put ginger and the goji berries. Um, also, what I like to also use is uh, to cut the fattiness or the richness, put a little squirt of lemon in there. And this just brings out the flavor of the broth. It makes it more fresh tasting. So if you have any questions or comments, just put them down there. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe I'll update this to make more fancier broths. But uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.